Hello everyone, I have a wonderful case to share with you today. We have a lesion that's captured on this periapical radiograph and we have radiograph dating back all the way 2009, so radiograph over the past 10 years. So we will take a look how this lesion changed over the years and uh, based on that we should be able to determine what this is. So go ahead and take a look. Um, this mixed density lesion is located in the area of missing tooth number 19. Uh, looking at uh, it, it's primarily radio opaque centrally, very round, and it has some radiolucent component, radiolucent part, and you see a thin uh, border of lucency this area. And it's pretty close to the alveolar crest. Uh, this patient is asymptomatic. Uh, the gingiva over this region, uh, everything is normal. It's an ins so that's what we see in 2019. So now let's go back to um, bite wing that was taken. Let's see, this was uh, 2010. So this was 2010. So let's take a look at the radiograph. So you, you see the letter A, this was taken with phosphor plates, you can see the border is rounded unlike how it appears on panoramic, oh, excuse me, sensor and also the edge of the film or phosphor plate. Uh, you see this opaque mark suggesting that there is uh, some uh, quality of the image it's degraded because of the uh, phosphor plate was probably uh, damaged slightly. Anyway. Uh, the only reason I mentioned that is not too many people are using phosphor plates anymore at our school. Uh, we stopped using it about two years ago and most of you have not seen an image from phosphor plate so I just wanted to point that out. But look over here, uh, same area before patient ended up getting three unit bridge but the overall size and extent of the lesion is very similar to what we see now, right? So overall outer border is similar essentially unchanged over the last 10 years but really what changes is the the opacity the granular opacity that we see 10 years ago is a lot smaller you see a lot more radiolucent component and so over the 10 years this opaque entity became bigger and bigger and bigger such that it fills now 90 percent of this uh, this the whole region I want to go back to uh, 20, 2009 so this is all this radiograph that we have and unfortunately the image quality here isn't as good so this is taken 2009 so another bite wing that was captured just in the inferior uh, border of the image so I think the best one is 2010 here so this one is very telling okay so here's 2010 there's another one um, and let's see 2013 bite wing radiograph you see how it's gotten a lot a little bit bigger from 2010 to 2013 so this is 2013 2014 bite wing there it is it's gradually filling up this whole region and then 2015 cone cut 2016 there it is by now I mean this was three years ago but looks like it hasn't ha hardly changed over the last three years so this is 2016 right and now 2018 Finally, someone suggested to take a PA of this area. So we have a PA of that. And back to what we have today, 2019. So this bite wing was taken on the same day, 2019. So what do you think? I mean, you should really know the answer by now. Patient is asymptomatic. Um, Let's see. Uh, over the 10 years, 
the legion itself really hasn't grown much but it became this more radio opaque and so what do you think this is? if you have said periapiglossus dysplasia or cementoosseous dysplasia you're absolutely correct so that's how um, it changes over the years um, in this case it took 10 years to go from a size of something like this to what it is today so very very gradually and slowly changing as you know a typical textbook scenario goes something like uh, middle-aged african-american female presents to clinic with asymptomatic periapical radiolucencies in the anterior mandible um, and that's kind of the clinical scenario that a lot of examiners will tell you and unfortunately uh, some in some cases this radiolucency is seen as a endodontic lesion and they do root canal on it even though the patient uh, is asymptomatic and should be vital the tooth should be vital and uh, so yeah endodontic root canal is not needed as a matter of fact it's best to leave this one alone and not to do not to do anything surgically uh, surgical intervention may only compromise the delayed healing and possibly um, uh, infl inducing in infl inflammation at this site because of the reduced vascularity and maybe you're even risking the possibility of developing osteomyelitis um, so yes um, I just wanted to share this with you it takes a long time to go from a radiolucent lesion to become mixed density and toward the mature stage it becomes primarily a radio-opaque lesion so I hope you found this very helpful uh, we don't always get to show you radiographs over the 10 years but this uh, was a really tremendous case I think it has a lot of value to my video and also to your um, uh, for your educational benefit anyway thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video bye